So we're taking a look at outcome-based assessment part two now. We're trying to take a bit of a step beyond where we were before we had our first quick introduction to, to what outcome-based assessment was in the first place. We're going to go over that again really quick. But in this video, the intent will be to look a little bit more deeply at a particular outcome and then to take a look at what it might look like to assess within that outcome. So again, just really quickly, this was our idea for outcome-based assessment. We were taking all of the, the curriculum expectations, splitting them up into different outcomes, the different big ideas in a course, and those became our entries into our workbook. And then we were going to assess each of those outcomes on its own. <clears throat> this, you'll remember, we mentioned in the last video, these were the outcomes from a 1P course. And what I want to do in this video is is just talk us through a little bit around one of those particular outcomes. So I picked one, I picked outcome 10, uh, solving equations, by the way, of course, the numbers don't matter too much, but it's easier for me to say outcome 10. So solving equations, if that's our big idea for the course, um, what would that look like? What, what, what would it look like to be a level two or a level three in solving equations? So take a minute and think about that. I'm going to slip onto the next slide for a second and sort of show you what was originally planned. This this was what we were thinking for the 1P course. And I mean, this might change as we go into, into this new 1W D stream course. We don't even know what the curriculum is going to look like just yet. But it, I, I'm hoping that this will at least give you the idea of, of how it works. So solving equations, a couple things that are, are tricky. Think about what a level one would be. Right? What, what does it look like to have just met expectations, right? To just just barely reach that threshold where we're saying, yep, that's successful enough in this in this particular outcome. Again, that, that's not our goal, right? We're not hoping for level one. We're hoping for, for great success. But it's going to be important to have that in our head. What, what does it mean to be level one? And then a tough one, what does it mean to be level four, right? What does it, what does it mean to, to have mastered solving equations at a grade nine level? Right? Because we're not talking about can you solve a, a quadratic here or you know a, a really fancy equation that you'd see in grade 10 or 11. This is a grade 9 course. What does it mean to have mastered solving equations at a grade 9 level? So remember, this is, this is what we're shooting for. We sort of need descriptors for these seven different levels, these seven different um, categories, just seven different areas that our students will fit in on. So every student should have one of these seven marks, one of these seven levels of achievement, um, progressions in their understanding, however you want to describe it, regarding every single outcome. So again, narrowing in, just solving equations right now, what would all seven of these look like? Now, the bottom one's pretty easy, right? Not yet demonstrated. Not yet demonstrated would be, like, like you haven't done anything. You, you haven't shown me anything. You haven't participated. For some, for some reason, absolutely nothing has happened. Now, very intentionally, we have that second level R, the, the limited evidence. And the purpose for that is the impact of a zero is really, really significant. So, and I mean, we've seen this before. If, if a student has enough zeros in a mark book, that can pull their mark down so far that climbing back up can be almost unachievable. So the idea that you're getting a the idea that you might only get level one at 55 or fail at zero is such a huge gap. So that 35 helps to bridge that gap. Limited evidence means, man, we're, we're trying, right? We're, we're, we've submitted stuff, we've completed work in class, but it still isn't up to standard yet, okay? Here is a glimpse at what this might look like. And I'm saying might because this is there's a lot of decision-making that has to go into what we're calling each of these levels, right? What 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 it would look like to be level three, and this is this is totally up for debate, right? This is something that very intentionally we should have multiple people working on to try and come up with this. And even after we do, there's going to be some issues with it, right? There, there's going to be some problems. Um, for example, I've I've set this up and we've I've basically said word problems become level four, which is often true, right? Word problems are are tricky, but it's quite possible we might have students who can solve word problems, but have trouble with variables on both sides, right? That, 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 that definitely could happen. And 
again, professional judgment kicks in and we have to make a decision and we're very capable of doing that. Um, so don't, don't be afraid of that. That's something that we're good at, something that we know, right? something we can handle. So level one, minimum standard to have passed this outcome, I'm saying is can solve one-step equations. And if I give them a, a student a one-step equation, I, I am confident that they can consistently solve that. Level two, two-step equation. Level three, variables on both sides. That feels like a pretty big jump. And then word problems would go after that. And, and for mastery, I said can solve challenging word problems. I'm also thinking, you know, maybe equations with variables on both sides, but also with some brackets or some collecting like terms that might need to happen. Basically, mastery is any question that I feel is at a good grade nine level, right? Still challenging, but still grade nine level. This student would get it every time. That, that's what mastery would look like. Now, let's take a peek at what these assessments could look like. And, and again, this is just a could. Um, there's lots of different ways of doing this. And we're going to talk about that as we go too. But this is just a possibility. And what I want you to notice is we don't have to do anything super fancy with the assessments. So what, like what I'm showing up here, this could look very much like a, like a quiz, like a test. There's, there's not a huge difference there. It's the way we're choosing to record things. It's the way we're looking at the information that the students are giving us that's the big difference. So here's a particular assessment. Um, apologies, I had to squish it just so you can see everything. So obviously I'd give more space, but I, I tried to put a fair bit of information all on one page. This would be a, an assessment where I'm saying students could demonstrate a level of achievement up to level two, two stars. So I'm using the stars as a, well, I think you saw it in fresh grade in, in the first video. We'll talk about that again in, in part three, different ways that we can actually record levels of achievement. But I'm writing it as two stars. I like the visual, but again, that that's just a choice we're making. What it means, level two. So what you'll see on here is I've got some one-step equations right at the top, and there's also some two-step equations. So if a student is able to successfully complete this, can answer these questions, then they've demonstrated to me that they're at at least level two. Now, what that means is that on here, I'd be recording two stars. They've, they've earned two stars. They've banked this level two already. That's a little bit confusing for kids because they're used to seeing, hey, I got perfect on this page. I should get 10 out of 10, 20 out of 20, wh whatever it is. They're used to seeing that perfect score, right? Level two is not perfect. Level two is a 65. But what it's saying is you've already convinced me you're level two. You're already there. You're going to show me more later, but you've already banked this level two. You're in great spot. Okay. Uh, let's think about the other way for a second. Though. Let, let's say a student didn't crush this assessment. What if they were only able to get the first three questions there? You'll notice A, B, and C are all one-step equations. Well, the advantage of that, they may, they may have gotten almost everything wrong on this page except those three questions, but they could still learn level one, right? That would still be enough for level one. So instead of having this page where they would get a mark again out of 10, and say they only got the first three right and they get three out of 10, and they're failing, by looking at it this way, more holistically, we're seeing what they can do, and then we're focusing on providing feedback for what their next step would be. So they can already solve one-step equations. That's great. Your next step now is to try and work on two-step equations. Here's some suggestions on how to do that. And that means I don't need to be putting X's all over the page, right? I can just provide some, some feedback, give some tips on, you know, 2X plus 5 equals 13. Well, the first thing we should do here is not get rid of the 2. We should be subtracting 5 on both sides, right? That's the first step we should be taking. So providing that feedback is what we're hoping for, and that's going to push the students hopefully into the next level as they try more questions. Now, here's an example of uh, a level 3. Notice now we've got some variables on both sides. I've got a question down below that I stole from an open middle website. Um, I love those open middle questions. Gets a chance for the students to show some thinking, which anytime, anytime we can do that, we certainly want to. Now, again, looking at this page, if they can do this, they've demonstrated, okay, great, great, we're up to level three. And let's jump one, for, one further here. Here's level four. And we got a whole bunch of word problems. 
So this is giving the students a chance to try some more challenging problems. Now you notice the variety here still. Um, question number one, that's a one-step equation. It's a, it's a pretty straightforward one, whereas question four down there at the bottom would be quite challenging. So we've got a lot of variety here. The other thing to keep in mind is if you have a student who's still working on, say, level one or trying to move into level two, they're probably not ready for this. And that's okay. This is providing us with the freedom to say, you know what, this isn't the assessment for you today. There's no sense in you trying this if it's beyond you. Let's go back and try some more two-step questions because that's our goal for you right now. It's way more individualized, way more differentiated. And coming up with a few extra two-step equations is not, not a huge challenge for us. It's easy enough to find a worksheet or make up six questions that are two-step equations for students to solve. So it's allowing a little bit more flexibility in what assessments we can deliver to students. So there, there's a quick breakdown. Now, what you're seeing here, these are all pretty small little assessments. So what I'm thinking of these are, these would be um, worksheets that you could have done throughout the, throughout the unit, right? Just insert here and there, and I'm going to collect them. One thing that I believe is tricky is the balance between a, a formative assessment and a summative assessment. We talk a lot about that, um, how students need chances to practice. And then after they practice enough, then give them the summative. And I agree with that. That makes sense. But at the same time, I think we, we have this tendency to think of formative and summative as they must be two separate things. And I disagree with that. I think formative and summative are what we choose to make of it. So for example, if I back up here for a minute, let's go back all the way to here. This would have been probably the very first assessment that I would have given the class. And if a student, student did really well on this, right, got, got the whole thing, they've already convinced me they're level two, I want to record that, right? I, I want them to know that, good job, you've already banked level two, way to go. You're on a, you know, a nice course here to be progressing into level three in the next day or two. So in that case, it's a summative assessment, right? I'm recording it. But if a student didn't do very well, right? What if, the, what if this went horribly, horribly wrong? And I just wanted to put some feedback on here and then we're going to try it again tomorrow. Well, that's formative, right? In that case, it's formative. I'm not recording. I don't, I don't need this to be a, a mark that's recorded for them if we're going to have another opportunity to come back to it again another day. So that balance between when I'm choosing to record and when I'm not helps quite a bit. Okay, let's skip through. This is my last slide and we're probably going to have to jump back a little bit to look at some of the previous assessments too. Um, something I should have mentioned, those first three, as I was saying, those are kind of the assessments along the way. What I'm hoping is that by the time those three are done, I have a really good sense of what my students know. So I have a really good understanding of each student and I'm pretty sure I know which level they're at. Well, I'm probably still gonna have a final assessment, right? Something that wraps it up at the end of the unit. I, I like doing that. Um, so whatever that might look like, I'm probably gonna give them that, that final chance to say, okay, now convince me again, right? I already think you're level three. Here's one more assessment. Convince me you really are level three, or hopefully maybe even convince me you've taken that next step. But by the end, when we're trying to do that summative, I already pretty much know where the students are. That summative is being used as the validation, that, that extra check and that extra chance to have the students go one step further. Okay, this was mentioned in the first video, talking about the reasons that I think outcome-based assessment is, is worthwhile. It's worth making the switch. So really quickly, let's just go through these guys. Um, the first one, understanding and reporting more specifically on what each student knows. So remember, all we were talking about there was solving equations. That is one particular outcome. And the advantage to this is wherever, whatever level a student lands on, I can now be really specific about what that student knows, right? If they're level two, I know what level two means. Level two means that they can solve two-step equations and that their next step is to try and figure out variables on both sides of an equation. That, that's really clear to me, as opposed to just having some generic percentage, right? Because it's, because it's tied to an outcome, I know exactly what it means. Second bullet, by the end of this course, students will. This is allowing that flexibility of having time. Right? If students don't get the first assessment, if it doesn't go well, but they can do it again a couple days later and they do have it by then, then it didn't matter that the first one didn't go well. All I need to do is record the, the, the progress that's being made. So because I'm constantly 
updating entries in my markbook rather than putting new ones in, the old stuff gets erased, right? It's, it's always the most current mark that's in there that matters. Number three, late and missing assignments. Again, a tough one. I don't want late assignments. I don't want missing assessments, but that's not the point of what I'm trying to assess. I'm trying to assess what the student knows. So let's say the student didn't hand in the first one, the one and two step. But for some reason, it didn't come in. They didn't complete it. Not sure why, but for some reason, it's not there. But then they did the variables on both sides assessment and had no trouble. Well, if they can do variables on both sides, they can solve one step and two step equations, right? I don't really need them to go back and do that old one again. All that I need to know is what, this, what level that student's at. So I can make that determination despite the fact that there's a missing assessment there. Having said that, if they're missing the level four assessment, I mean, they have to convince me of something. So it's only what they've convinced me of. Remember, anything that isn't handed in is a missed opportunity. It's a missed opportunity to show me what they know. It's a missed opportunity to get feedback. So I don't need to give them zeros. I don't need to give them late penalties. They're missing out on that opportunity that I'm trying to give them. Fourth bullet, triangulation. This is a nice example, actually, with um, solving equations as our outcome. Solving equations we can see in, in a lot of different ways. And it can, also be, it can also be a tough one, right? The algebra can be tough for students. So for the most part, we're going to see students be successful as they're trying to solve some of these equations. But we might have some kids that are not performing well when it comes time to put it on paper. But we have all kinds of opportunities throughout a course to have seen what the kids did, right? Answering questions in class, asking questions in class, doing homework, uh, working on vertical surfaces, doing group work together. There's all kinds of opportunities where we have seen what the students can and can't do. So the triangulation piece is me taking in all of that information and making my professional judgment about what the student knows and doesn't know. That's helpful here. It's tricky because it's not something we're necessarily used to doing, and it's hard to figure out how to put it into a traditional mark book. But because we're doing things with outcome based and we're just recording based on what each outcome is, we really can take in all of that information and make that determination. Last bullet before we wrap up, solves the key issues. I'm going to back up for a second because I want you to see some of these questions again that I had on here. Here's the first one and two step equation. It's a little hard to see, sorry about that. Um, the question says, how would you solve these two questions differently? That's a nice communication question, it's pretty good. Um, but I mean, question number one, that's all knowledge, right? Number two, well, number one, all knowledge. We got some thinking though with that open middle, kind of like that. And here, obviously we got some word problems, that's some application questions. But what you'll notice you do not see anywhere, there's no key to break down, right? It's all just, here's some questions. There is a variety of different types but I'm not recording it separately, right? It's all being recorded as one overall generic mark. I like that. I like that a lot. And honestly, if you think about the different outcomes that we're going to have throughout a course, different outcomes will lend themselves more to those different categories. So personally, I would say solving equations tends to lend itself more to knowledge type questions, probably application as well. But those two are, are you know, kind of feels more like those are a big part of that outcome. Whereas something like um, rate of change and equations of lines, that might feel more application and inquiry based, right? So we're gonna naturally allow that to happen and naturally have Kika fill into each of our outcomes along the way. I hope that made some sense, um, talking about how we might actually go through a particular outcome. We're gonna have one more video to talk about outcome-based assessment. The final thing we need to talk about, which will be in the part three video is how can we actually record this? What does it look like to try and record this in a system that will make sense? Thanks for watching.